Well lads, welcome back. The workshop is getting out of hand. Too many things coming in. I'm not getting at them. Nothing but machines coming in this week. More going in than there is going out. And she's starting to build up. Right, a Dewalt saw. Of the older type 18 volt saw brushed motor DCS 391 type 10. Note could be my battery, try something bigger. Of the saw. Not a kick out of it. There we go. Moving too free. Should be a wee bit of resistance in that blade. In other words, it's the brush holder. Brushes are more than likely worn out and not making contact. Yep. Worn away completely. Nothing left of them two. Get under this, swap out this whole brush holder, this black end here, and actually hold the brushes in place. Question is, did it destroy the armature if they wore down that much? These are pressed in there tight, and that one will actually be a bit burnt. This may have been cooked. Be able to salvage that wire. aren't making contact at all. Both of these ones are off. Doesn't look burnt. If you look in between these segments you'll see the copper windings. I want to make sure none of them are black. I want to make sure there's no black ones up in here or on here. Any black windings at all be a sign that it's burnt out. So on the times there can only be a single one you'll see it way in the back of here underneath all the rest. They're okay. Actual resin coating on the armature. That looks okay. If they get too hot and short out, that resin generally gets too hot as well and blows off. You'll see we chip come off it or you'll see the whole thing blow off. That's okay. And then the actual combar itself may not be looking great. But all the segments top and bottom are the same colour. This black here is just because of this. These brushes weren't making contact. So instead of actually touching and rubbing on the rotor, they left a gap. And that gap caused the current to actually spark across the arc, which causes this black pattern. So a bit of the brush build up, marking across on the actual arcing, causes all this black build up. So I wouldn't worry too much about this. It's more the colour of these con bars here. You want them all to be the same. If you see any lighter or darker segment, it's a sign that segment's burnt out or got a higher resistance. This is fine, hopefully, because even though it looks good, there's no guarantee. It can all look fine, put a new brush holder on, start her up, it can just sound terrible. 
can still be shorted or bad and look good at the same time. Visual check is just reducing the odds of it being bad, but there's no guarantee. Just give that a quick clean. Now to actually change out the brush holder, this part here, you actually have to dismantle the field as well. Two long T10 torques down through the bottom. Base pulls away and the field pulls out. Get rid of that. Now your brush holder. This is a complete kit. Full brush holder with brushes and all attached. Now to assemble. The field has a top and a bottom. Bottom has one wee notch, the top has two. This one has two notches, it has to go on up here. Just tighten everything back down, and that's it installed. Actual holes for the base aren't symmetrical so you can put it on you cannot put it on upside down it has to go on that way when you go to assemble it it should just click together push straight on no interference and there's the time to click your springs back into place pull them over and put them on to the actual brushes forget to do that things not going to run Plastic cover. And lastly, back on your base. That should be it. Sir, new brush holder done at this time. If you do do that job, change the brushes. And you just hear, hear it crackling. It starts to smell, or you're seeing sparks from here. It means your armature is bad. You're not going to know fully till you test the machine. Wouldn't be worth putting an armature onto this thing. Brush holder alone is quite expensive. That's that one. The Walt nail gun. This is a DCN six nine two riffing gun. Flashing light. Could be a nail jam, or it could be a set of springs. Not the springs. Now 
Dan is nu een heel jam. Maybe it was just seized. Might have been lying up, maybe. Could have rusted a bit. No. Ah, that'll be why. Motor's gone. Right, that's just not looking like it's going to be worth it. Put a motor into this thing. It's going to cost about 190 euro. Buy the gun for 450 body only. Probably would be worth it. The gun was in a wee bit better condition. But, go ahead, the rust that's on it. Which is rusted on here. And the fact that I don't think this was opened or fixed before, so more than like the access, will eventually need to be changed, which would be another 80 or 90 euro. I don't think this one's going to be worth it. Plus, it's a 2019. No, I don't think, once the motor goes in these, I don't really think they're worth putting it on. Plus, the amount of rust and water damage it had to have had to seize that motor like that. It's just not going to be worth it. If I put a motor into that, well, in no time, there'll be something else failing. But another part need to be changed. I think that one just has its work done. Forget about it. Right, next up we have a pass load. This battery is destroyed anyway. Not much I can do with that one. It's only at, not even at one volt. This one is the older IM65 F16 NICAD battery. Power on. Full can of gas, 2024, and it, and a wee bit dirty inside, but not too bad. Don't fire. Push the back door. Right. Problem's the door. This just isn't worth fixing. This door's worn out. That's not. She's not pushing the gas can far enough up. So now you plunge this down, these two probes come up. And it lifts the door here. So it pivots it. So this pushes up. The back end here pushes on. Either these wear out, or this wears out, but it doesn't press the gas on enough for it to actually put on a shot of gas. Problem is, this door's now gone. Obsolete. Can't replace. So that's the gun no good. The only thing you can do is pack the door out a wee bit. Put something on here. It's going to put a bit of extra leverage against the gas. Sometimes might cure it temporarily, yes, but does get it running again.
that sorts it short term fix it'll do for a little while at least it leaves it so the fella knows where to put that bit of cardboard to fix it up can use a bit of plastic but if you use anything too heavy it's going to be too thick cut it the size glue it on that gives the extra bit of pressure to push against the gas short term fix does for a while but that's your only option this door is just not available anymore i'll keep this man running for a wee while this is a dhp 481 problem broken chuck jaws are sticking out one broken jaw you chuck needed luckily that jaw's gone on doesn't go on you can give it a slap of the hammer sometimes that'll get it on but the jaws need to be out of the way for you to, for you to do this repair what do you need put it in drill mode low speed first thing get that screw out of there left hand thread so tighten it to take it out They are tight. Take that out. Now, you need a big 10 mil Allen key and a big hammer. Be careful on tightening up this chuck. The Allen key doesn't swing around and hit you. So it will slap you quite hard. Just needs to hold enough. Have it about there. And give her a good slap. Might need a couple of goes. That is not working. Well, no wonder. The chuck spindle is not locking. Well, that's no good. It's not going to come off like that. The chuck won't come off, or you can't get it off. It's just too tight with the jaws are jammed on it you can't get an allen key in you can't get the bolt out of it this is your second option cut it off <coughs> this one's not going to come off because of the spindle lock on this one it's meant to prevent you from being able to turn the motor by turning the chuck isn't working either it's failed or defective doesn't matter the chuck won't come off every time i turn the chuck i'm just turning the motor that's no good. So to get it off, you're going to have to cut it off. Exact same process if you can't get the screw out or the jaws. Get a grinder. Slice it straight down, round about here. That'll cut off the bulk of the chuck and show the spindle underneath. And you can cut down at the edge of the spindle, cut off the rest of the chuck down to the threads. And that'll give you the release then to take the rest of the chuck off. So we'll do that here. Open the chuck fully if you can, makes it easier. If you can't open it up fully, it just means you have to cut through the jaws as well. Leave it more work.
So get back a wee bit further. Just makes it harder if you cut through all of it. Easier if you cut back here. But it's hard to tell whereabouts it is. So that's what you want. Now you can just see the inner shaft and that's the chuck spindle. What you want to do now is just cut down through there. Just make sure you can actually see the threads. If you can't see them, buff them back a bit more. You can just see the threads poking through. You can actually see a split the whole way up. See down here the way it's split. So this outer ring of the chuck now has split open and she's lost its clamp and hold. Now it could be knocked off. Now this is a dirty way of doing it, but it does work and it's an awful lot safer for the drill. There's no risk of damage in the gearbox. That's it. She will chuck off. And that's why she wouldn't come off. Look at the amount of lock tight in that thing. It wasn't just held on by a screw, it was loaded with lock tight as well. Nothing fancy. Just a normal steel chuck. Start it up. Put it on high speed and slam it on. You can stick your left handed bolt back into the middle. As you. One new chuck on a Makita DHP 481. If you can't knock it off, cut it off. Safest thing for the drill. If you're too rough, you can end up busting gearboxes if you haven't put too much force torquing the thing off. And when they have that much Loctite on them, you're better off cutting them off. Safe for the gearbox, easier in the long run. Next up we have an Instafix. Customer stuck for a gun. He's bought a new one, but I still need a second one. Let's see if we can get this one up and running again for him now. Nice and quickly. Do it instantly. Did buy a new gun, so can't really say no. Battery's working. Gas is on date. Motor's starting. Sticking though. Plunger's not coming back. Okay, that is working. No problem there. There's something just causing it to stick. So 
it's not going on right. It's going to there and it's just getting jammed. You have to put a bit extra, extra force then to get it going fully. Just sticking on the way back. This might just be a service. I'll strip it down and see what's what. Needs a service. Hmm. It's not dirty. It's actually just bone dry. It's full of dust. Cement dust. Why would that be on there? That's probably why it's sticking. No grease or oil whatsoever on the o-ring. Mind you, the o-ring looks okay. Might need to be changed. But yeah. That's bone dry. How do you get it that dry? Must be just lying in the back of a van, maybe. Clean it out. Regrease it, rebuild it. The rest of it doesn't actually look too bad. Can get these on sometimes and just a right stit. This isn't too bad. This one's all right. It's dry, but it's not been wet. These bolts can be tight. Keep a firm grip. You don't want to start spinning. You don't want to start drilling, and this thing starts spinning on you. Body we squeeze. Just everything's dry. Lid in the chamber. There's where the dirt's getting onto. Inside the actual firing chamber. So that's going to be fouling up and sticking to the o ring, causing that to get very tight. Could be jamming here and this one and on this one. Even though this one might be a wee bit tight, you should be able to overcome it. When you actually plunge this down, this actually seats both o rings together. So you actually have to overcome the dirt on both of them. Both of them are just dry and gummed up. The rings are still intact. They don't look to be damaged. Right. Wash this all down and we'll soon get our fire in again. Thank you. 
effect that is there. Kerosene's not even touching it. Something a little stronger on it. Just let that soften up. And do the same with this. Stronger helps take off that old tar build up. I really want to be using a mask or stuff like that. It's fairly carcinogenic. That's them all cleaned, washed out, blown down with a compressor and then wiped dry with an old rag to get all the residue off the cleaner off them because if you put them together with some of the cleaning residue on which is just kerosene on the parts washer kerosene will then break down the oil again so you need them bone dry before you rebuild them and the same as always anywhere there's moving parts steel rings or something that's going to wear put a wee taste of oil onto it it's mainly just the steel rings on the piston o-rings on the chamber and the cylinder head now this thing these am360s burn at a higher temperature they take a bit more gas so the oil does burn away a lot more easier no harm putting a bit extra on. It's not like the IM350 or the 350 Plus. It eventually just starts to fill up with oil. But there's oil also and the gas to keep it lubricated. So eventually it starts to build up too much. You need a service. These ones actually keep burning away the oil very quickly. These need a service as well simply because the oil just turns to a tar. It's all burnt away and turns black. So there's no harm from a little bit of extra on. So it stays lubed up for longer. I have a store of gloves on. chamfer side faces down towards the nails. So much better that sounds now. That's where the 
and should be sounding nice and smooth not squealing and squeaking rubber bumps the bottoms out slide on there and these wee plastic boys are just holders for the spring the spring has a wee locating pin on the bottom put that on there and push on the wee plastic piece into the body Just a little dust shield to help keep some of the dust getting up into the chamber. This is the bottom. This is the bottom. Push it down. Push in your pan. Cover on. You have to feed this wee gas tube through the hole. We'll bolt it back down again. Lift up your regulator, push on your connector. Then locate your chamber. On your top half. For the back, line up these notches with your housing, these two plastic pieces, and just give it a wee twist. And that's it done. Plug your spark plug on, plug in your motor lead. And that's it. Gas, battery, and the gas has to prime up the regulator, so it takes three pumps at least before it will fire the first nail. It's ready. That's it. That's running a lot smoother now. Actual plunger. As you can 
down and springing back without any interference. So that's all it was. Just them two O-rings were packed out with grease and dirt and dried out. Good service. This is up and running again. Next up we have a Makita saw. It's seen better days. He's broken the base. It's obviously had a drop. It's actually broken the bearing plate as well, the bearing housing. Too much play in that guard. We look and see just to make sure. Yeah. Something's bust there, isn't it? Need any new spring too. Kink in that one. So yeah, gear casing's also gone. <laughs> Gears all right though. Well, frame for the saw is okay. I need to change the base. Right. So this is the pivot. It has to come off. There's a steel pan on here as well, and over here. So I'll get the awkward bits done first. See if we can get these pans out. To get them out, I'm going to do a steel punch and a hammer. Not just pressed on. Actually, also screwed on. The Allen key under here. Tighten up the pan. Take out the Allen keys. Pans should come out a lot easier. Should. They don't always. That's your pan. Now this side. Handle off first. Seat clip holds it in place. Nut, washer, and a bolt at the back of it. Give this a wee knock. Oh, it's nice when they come out that handle. The other way pieces off your base, transfer them over.
to that. I knew this, and I knew hosing. things on first. On your screw first, there's the lock and the pivot. Just to hold it all together. Then line up for your pin. And actually has a shoulder on it with actual grub screw to lock into. Oh, forgot that. Need the grub screw. Press your pan on. Get it locked. Move your handle down to the lock position. You have plenty of travel then when you want to unlock it. Thing. One more grub screw, which is also on the base. Clean out the sawdust first. You can see they're untight. Everything sticks to the hole. It's a good test for them we have Allen keys. Can that no problem? Sweet grub screw just goes on here. It's a very simple but a very important job. And that is a Allen key. That grub screw comes up here, look. It touches the frame of the saw here. If it's not perfectly square and it's cut in a bit of a bevel, you can tighten up this Allen key or slacken it off, whichever way you need. And that'll change the angle the blade is actually sitting at. Just to stop for your base for a 90 degree cut, so it's sitting at zero. Now, 
was the difficult bit. This is your housing. So we have to get everything out of this and onto this. Starting with this bearing. Go to bearing press, press this off. To get this bearing out here because there's actually nothing wrong with it. Keep that bearing, help keep the cost down a wee bit. You need to get that out. There's actually an aluminium cover on this gear housing. We also need to get off. Your circlip pliers is all you need. Just to grab on here, twist it off. That bearing, so we'll keep that first. I'm going to press on the spindle. It actually, isn't all that tight. Press it on by hand. And put that on. And now you put on your cover. That's a left hand thread. It just keeps the bearing on nice and tight. Press it on clamps it on solid to the housing. Next, press your gear back on and press your bearing back on. That's the gear on. Lastly, your bearing. Again, it's not actually that tight. Just press it on by hand. Put that back in. Much better. Lastly, one new spring that clips in to here. ring in there and your back flange blade front flange and your bolt
last thing. Just to adjust the base now to get it square. Unlock it. Nice. Lastly, put the wee thumb screw on for tightening down your guide rail. And that's it. One Makita. 5008MGA 2017 saw with a new aluminium plate and a new bearing box. That's her. A 330 euro Makita saw fixed up again for just 70 euro. It's not bad. The actual price of the base isn't all that bad. It's well worth changing. Passload 18S. 18 gauge single strip nail gun. First time I've had one of these ones in. Very stumpy little gun. Now it takes a single strip of 18 gauge nails. I have another gun that takes a double strip. This is just a one strip knitter. And for a service, and it says it's sticking also. Okay, where we test out here, see what it means by sticking. Gas in her and end it. Always a start. Yeah. Stuck. Of course, leaves the motor jammed on also. So she's going on, but she's not coming out. Drop it down, see what the problem is, give it a service. actually broken. That was going to be a broken yoke on it, but it's not. One deeper. Let's see what we can find. Could just be dirt. It's all gritty around here. Once the C clip for holding the piston is snapped, that'll have to be got out.
broken C club. Bone dry inside. Not a drop of oil on it. Clean all this down, get it dried off, re-greased. Here, so it won't do much damage to the motor or anything. Should be alright for all the electronics. We just still don't want to get it, but you still don't want to be getting it up onto the spark unit. Try to keep that dry if possible. Same with the motor. You don't want to drown it. And give it a wet wipe. Okay, all clean and dry, ready to go. All the steel rings, anything where there's metal on metal, give it a little coat of oil. Try to use pass load oil if possible, because it's just better at the higher temperatures. course the new internal C clip keep that in place Make sure your all your steel rings are staggered. 
two in each. Make sure the opening is 180 degrees apart. Just helps give it a better seal. Hold it all together. Get your screws back on. This little boy this will activate your switch for whenever you plunge it down, it starts the motor. A sweet piece at the top can break off sometimes. So if you plunge your gun down and the motor's not starting, always check that there. Just to marry the two up, you actually have to hinge into each, into each other. Same on this side. Just get the presses down. That's her, she's running, she's firing. Probe's gone back out, motor's stopping again. Problem with the probe, more than likely just grit in the back of the chamber, fouling it up. But also, there was a very, very, very slight bend on the probe arm itself. I never had it off, I actually give that a couple of taps with a hammer just to straighten it out a wee bit. Could have been that, probably was the grit inside. Just hadn't been serviced in a while, but a dirt had gotten onto it. 
oil you see there that's just the excess gets that gets blown out of the gun from the first few shots that's her ready to go there now on pass load 18s 18 gauge single strap nailer full service ready to go thanks for watching lads hope you enjoyed it because we like and a follow if you like the content